Well, this is a first for this channel, ready to run models. So with nothing to build or paint, these two get weather in for added realism. Hi guys, so here we are, my very first W9 ready to run models. These are the X Glim Valley Tramway coaches as running on the Talatin. Dundas supplied these for me, and on first glance they're really tidy models, so let's open them up and inspect. It's quite clever how they're attached to the display base. Too clever actually. I kept spinning the bottom toggle before I realised it needs to be in the horizontal position to release them. That's five minutes gone. The first thing that sticks out to me is how some detail isn't actually painted, such as the steps and handrail on the end. Not to worry, we'll sort that out. The lining around the windows and the crest are really crisp. I really don't think I could do that myself. On the whole, they're decent models as they are, but they do look a little bit like toys and lack realism, so that's what I'm going to concentrate on in this video. Before we crack on, I need to strip it down to the basic parts. The roof is just sitting in place so that can be pulled off, and at this point I could see the interior. It's pretty basic, but you can't really see it through the window, so it doesn't matter. The window panels are a clever design. They slot into pockets in the interior piece. Basically, everything just pulls apart, including the couplings out of their pockets, and the wheel sets. Ah, plastic. Okay, well, I would have expected metal, but maybe this keeps the cost down a little. The roof doesn't need anything doing to it, since it has the rain strips moulded on, so I'll just glue on the cotton bud. I'm taking advantage of the slot that attaches the model to the display case, and with an angle cut into the end of the cotton bud I can just jam it in there real good. I looked up reference photos of the coaches as they are on the talent lint, and the bottom of the body looks to be painted black. And at this point don't shout out the error if it's driving you mad already, if you can't see it because you're not a TR nerd then sit tight. I'm using Tamiya masking tape here. It's really decent quality, and you know my feelings about quality masking tape. It means a lot to me. When you mask bodies like this and lay piece over piece up the sides, make sure that you've sealed the join, as the paint will creep up between the pieces of tape. The bottom then gets sprayed with acrylic black primer. Being primer, this keys nicely to the already painted body parts. With the black paint out, I went to work painting the unpainted detail parts that stick out enough from the body to make this a relatively easy job. And again, the steps need to be black also. Aside from that, I think it was just the lamp brackets to finish off. Ah, so there's the error. The photos I saw weren't actually up to date, and at the moment the coaches are running fully green. So now I need to remove the black again. This was done with a cotton bud dipped in IPA. You really do need to be careful as it's super easy to remove the base colour as well. This wasn't a complete waste of time as the buffer beams did need to be black anyway. I couldn't remove 100% of the black here, but guess what? It doesn't actually matter due to the weathering process. Three cheers for absolute luck! The main thing to add to the coach is a pin wash to give the impression of deeper gaps between the panels. For these coaches I'm using MIG Ammo Black Wash, which is enamel. I don't want the heavy weathered look from the last series, and the enamel gives a bit more control when applying and removing it. The black enamel wash is applied through the panel joins, between doors and the like. This is then cleaned up with IPA or enamel thinners. Again, you do have to be careful here, but you don't need to be adding pressure to the brush, just little strokes to encourage the paint into the corners. 
I also wipe the brush on a paper towel before returning to the model, as this cleans up the middle of the panels and stops you just rubbing the black around. Some downstrokes also help the appearance of rain and weather down the sides. With that dry, see the comparison next to the second coach, which is as it came from Pico. I'll move on to the ends. And this is very much the same principle, but focusing on the downstrokes. Soot and dirt accumulates at the top of coaches on a steam railway, but I'll add this separately later on. So you can see the clean brush is tidying up the panels on the end, whilst keeping some black around the details. Another detail missing if you're modelling a TR are the yellow axle boxes. This is just a generic yellow acrylic. And I'll tone these down with weathering as per the body. I waited for the model to dry and surveyed the weathering. And I decided at this point, whilst I'm modelling autumn so the coaches will probably be a bit more dirty, it's still a little heavy, so I'll touch it up with thinners once again. The interior of this coach is actually quite difficult to see through the glazing, and I'm not that bothered about making 100% accurate. So I'll just give it basic colours of the prototype. This involves painting the fabrics of the doors and the seats blue. and the floor grey. Again this is no thorough job and it'll just give a basic look should anyone get that close to my layout which I urge you not to, that won't be good for my anxiety levels. Looking at my photos of the coach I took a few weeks back at the TR I noticed a lot of yellow orange browny dust on top of the buffers. I'm going to replicate this with a light spray of Humbrol number 61 which is a very light matte browny colour. This is only getting applied to the bottom of the coach ends and a little bit around the underframe as general muck. Going back in with the thinners will push this coat down towards the bottom of the coaches. The other end isn't so easy as the steps are in the way here, so you need to give each little section its own attention to remove the spray. The whole model is getting a light coat of satin varnish. This will not only secure the applied paint, but also bring a uniform finish to all stock on the layout, as this is the varnish I used on the open coaches and anything else going forward. The roof also gets a spray of varnish and this will give a good base to apply the weathering. The stock finish is smooth, so that's not ideal for washes. To weather the roof, I apply the black wash like in the Cora series, but at a much more diluted mix. This is then encouraged to pull around the rain strips and ends. The roof is popped back onto the coach, so the sooty ends can be applied. An airbrush is a must for jobs like this, as it allows you to get a nice smooth transition between the clean and dirty areas. I'll let the coach dry for a few hours now. In the meantime, let's suss out this week's sponsor, Dundas Models. Being a Dublin 9 online superstore, it's not just the kits that you can purchase, but ready to run models from model railway giants like Pico and Bachman. The prices here are competitive, and the fact that you can buy products from various manufacturers in one shop is really appealing to me. Dundas can also be found at various exhibitions around the UK and are brilliant for keeping in stock. I've managed to get certain kits from Dundas when the manufacturer itself is out of stock. Thanks again to Dundas Models for sponsoring the video.
With the model now fully dry, one thing that stuck out were the buffers, as these were hit with the weathering destined for the other parts around them, so to tidy these up they were painted with acrylic black. Being acrylic, the finish will be matte, and this is fine for the buffer. However, buffer faces usually have grease centres, so to portray those I'm painting the centre of the buffer faces with a gloss varnish. All that's needed now is to put the coach back together. With a very clever screwless design it's just a case of fitting the interior piece back in and sliding the window panels into position. The first side is easier than the second and you might need to pry the interior parts away from the coach side to slot the glazing in. The couplings are then attached. These fit into pockets so can be removed and added as you wish. Oh and those plastic wheel sets. I did consider swapping these out for metal replacements by Greenwich but the coach seems to run really nicely as it is. There's always that option for the future. If you watched my previous video I built with the slate wagons, you would have seen that I wasn't exactly happy with the finish I got, and to improve that I decided to give the wagons the same weather and treatment as these coaches. So the black enamel wash was first applied to the wagons, and then carefully tidied up and removed with a clean brush. I did start to remove a little bit of the grey paint, so maybe the thinners are a tad strong for this job. Or I'm just keen. When the weathering was dry I highlighted raised detail such as the bolt heads with light antique white. I really like how this helps to give a weight to the model. I'm much happier with these wagons now, even if I still don't have the number transfers. And yes, I know that they look a little bit more weathered than the prototypes currently are, as they're freshly painted, but I bet once they've run through autumn they'll be just as mucky. Weathered stock definitely looks more interesting anyway. And that goes for the coaches as well. I'm really pleased with these, and I feel like the weathering has given a nice sense of realism. In my eyes these look so much better than as they came from the box. And it all helps to build a realistic model railway. I hope you agree. Cheers.